everyone. Hello, thank you for being with us this afternoon. Uh, my name is Grace uh, with the Washington Square Park Conservancy. We've got Cheryl and uh, head gardener at the park, Guy, who are actually live from Washington Square Park, which is very exciting. And uh, they're going to walk us through the park and show us some trees today. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Guy and Cheryl. Hello, everybody. Uh, well, I'm Guy. Uh, there are some wonderful trees in the park, and I'm very happy to share them with you. Uh, so let's start, right? So this here is the Diodar cedar. Uh, it's one of our most popular trees. A lot of people ask about them. It's a gorgeous tree. You know, it has this pyramidal uh, habit and these beautiful arching and, and pendulous branches. Uh, it's an evergreen conifer, not all conifers are evergreen, this one is. Um, it grows very, it can grow very tall, I'm talking about some 70, 80, 90 feet tall. And it's, and it's a wonderful tree that it creates a really nice space. You know, it, because it's evergreen, it it's, has interest year round. You know, it blocks the view from outside the park, so it creates an intimate space in here. You know, it's just the, and the tree itself, you know, the, the needles, the, it's, you know, the habit of the tree is just a gorgeous tree. And we have it in different places of the park. Right now we are at the uh, northeast entrance, but it, we, have, we have groupings of this tree in other places of the park as well. Um, all right, and I'm gonna walk south, look at some other trees. We're gonna walk around the park. So now we're going to look at uh, some hollies and some ginkgo. And uh, Grace, this is Cheryl working the camera. We're just gonna turn off our camera as we walk so we don't make anyone dizzy when we're walking fast to the next stop, all right? And while you are muted, I will have up uh, some nice close-up shots of the trees that we're looking at so you can see um, in case it didn't come through super clear on this camera. So this is that first tree Guy was talking about just now. Um, and he will bring us over to our next one. Uh, as usual, there's some uh, music playing closer to our next one, so do let us know if you can hear that volume. <laughs> and it is a really nice day here. The sun isn't super shining, but it is, uh, <laughs> but it is, uh, busy and crowded and and all those fun things all right we're going to start our video once again all right so this is our next stop and this is actually one of my favorite parts of the park one of the, my favorite paths is the holly those are the hollies the Mally Stephen holly and i love how it frames this path so it creates a very nice pastoral look you know if you can see what's around the bend very inviting and, and the hollies are evergreen as well, but those are broadleaf evergreens. And they produce this, uh, uh, a lot of fruit that birds love in the winter. It's also ornamental to fruit. And of course, the foliage is dark, dark, dark green, lustrous, shiny leaves. Uh, quite frightening. Uh, and right next to the hollies are the ginkgos that I want to talk about. We're, we're going to move just a little bit. So, uh, we're, we'll try to go slowly so you're not uh, <laughs> completely uh, dizzy, but the, the ginkgos are right up around the corner. So. While you're walking, I've pulled up our lovely uh, Nellie Stevens. You can see here the foliage uh, nice up close and some of those berries that'll turn that bright red uh, once we hit that season. All right, and here are the ginkgos. There are ginkgos everywhere in the park. Uh, the two of them are close together, these two ginkgos. Um, they're native to China. They are ancient, ancient trees. Uh, they were around at the time of dinosaurs. And they are uh, very strong trees for an urban setting. They take a lot of pollution, a lot of beating, a lot of traffic. Uh, so they've become, for a while now, very popular tree, uh, city trees. And they grow, they're nice shade trees. Uh, the foliage is really striking. It's a fan-shaped uh, leaf. There, it's very unusual. It's you know one of its kind only. Like not no other uh, tree looks like that. The fall color is 
can be quite stunning. It's a bright, bright yellow. Uh, the only thing about it is when there is a frost, it can drop all its leaves at once. <laughs> but until then, you know, with the fall color, you can really admire it. It is funny when you walk through the park after the first freeze and just all oh, the leaves are just on every path. You just see those poor ginkgos. So, and it's chilly. <laughs> Here we've got a close up of those ginkgo leaves. It can be a little hard to see. Um, I was able to catch a good picture on a sun shiny day, but that very distinctive leaf pattern. And uh, just a reminder, if you do have any questions as we're going through here, you can use the chat or the Q&A function and we'll take some questions at the end, but feel free to put them in as we go if you have any questions. So we are on the move to our next stop. So if you can leave that uh, close up of the ginkgo, which I wasn't really able to get too close to. Yes, those are very tall trees. So we've got a good Thank, uh, thank uh, uh, iPhone for making a good ca quality camera in their phones. I was able to get some good close-ups, even uh, being, you know, a good 15 feet under the leaves. All right. While well, you're walking, Cheryl, can you tell us where, uh, which direction you, so I know you started oops. in the uh, the northeast corner and you walked down so we walked, south. Yeah, uh, south along the east side of the park. And so now we're in what we call the southwest corner. Here, so I'll just do a pan around. <laughs> yes, with so the know full pollinator garden. Yes, exactly. Okay. E. All right, so <laughs> here we are with the meta sequoia, the dawn redwood. We have a little grove of it here. Um, it's another gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous tree. It grows really, really tall very architectural. It creates the space really nicely. Look how intimate and, and nice this is. It's, it's, it's a proper park. You know? it's, it's really nice and inviting. Uh, you can sit down on the shade of the tree. Enjoy it. Enjoy a peaceful, peaceful time. They grow. They grow really, really tall. You can see a really tall specimen around here on Houston Street across from Sarah D. Park. There's one right across the street, and from, from far away on house, and you can see how tall it gets. Uh, the bark is really, really striking. Uh, it's a conifer, but this one is not evergreen. It sheds its uh, leaves in, uh, in the fall and the winter. And uh, the structure of the tree, even without the leaves, is also, is also very ornamental. Uh, we have a bald cypresses in the park, which look very similar to the meta sequoia. When they are next to each other, you're, you're able to tell them apart, but when they are far away, uh, they, they remind, they look alike, so it's easy to confuse them. One way to tell them apart, let me show you this, Cheryl, is the arrangement of the leaves on the branch. So this is called opposite arrangement. So you have a bud, here the buds, and the leaves come out directly opposite of each other. If you can see here, it's, yes. it's really connected. Yep. Right? And this is a way to tell many, many trees apart. Uh, we're going to get into that more when we talk about the sweet gum and maples. That's another way to tell them apart. And, and so the meta sequoia, the leaves are opposite, but not on the bald cypress. The bald cypress, it goes, the leaves grow, come out of the stem spirally up on the branch. And, and the, um, both the sequoias here and the deodar cedars that we looked at first, those were both newly planted during the last renovation, correct? That's correct. Okay, that's, that's what correct. I thought. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not sure what types of evergreens are, well, this isn't an evergreen, sorry. What types of, uh, uh, tell me the right word again. Uh, conifer? Conifer. What yes. types of conifers were here before, but I'm not sure if there were any. I don't, I, I'm not sure if there were pines. Yeah, I, I don't we, we remember. We have some white pines, some Himalayan pines. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they were here before. Yeah, well, that'll be something we'll have to check out yeah. uh, on, the, on the design plan. So, okay. Right. Uh, so uh, we're going to walk west on this path towards the, the tulip trees and the sweet gums. Okay, so I'm going to stop the video.
And while you are doing that, I'll get our nice close up of this Dawn Redwood. So the Dawn Redwood in my photos is from a different part of the park. This is across from the sort of in that lawn that's between the park house, which is by the large dog run uh, and Holly Plaza. Um, so these are sort of, uh, if you're sitting in Holly Plaza facing Holly uh, with those benches under the trees uh, along there, this is where that Don, where this specific Don Redwood is. But here's a really great close up of those needles. You can see uh, the, the um, pairing that Guy was talking about where it grows straight out like that and from the bud here. So um, able to, to get a close in look. Again, sunshine is our friend uh, when we're looking at trees and leaves, it really helps uh, us be able to see a little better. Um, and it does seem like it's getting a little brighter out, which is Oh, exciting. there we go. That's exciting. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, all right. So these are Dawn Redwoods too. They, these are a little older and you can, and I love it how they are pl uh, planted on each side of the path. And it creates that symmetry, that balance, and how the branches come and, and meet just above the path. Uh, it, to me, this is like a spectacular. It's really pretty. And, and just past it, we're going to get to the, the sweet gum, liquid amber. And Grace, just tell me if I'm too jerky here. I'm trying to keep it smooth. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little bouncy, but you know, it's part of the. Okay. Hey, get <laughs> off the skateboard. <laughs> All right. So this is the sweet. These are the sweet gums. Uh, they weren't. They weren't planted long ago, so they're still small. But these will grow very, very tall. These can grow up to a hundred feet tall. Uh, so much so that at one point in the future, looking outside of the park, you wouldn't be able to see the building. We all will uh, we'll create the space and shelter it from the outside. So we're talking about alchemist and opposite leaves. Let me show you. So the leaves are very striking. They, they can be confused as, as maple leaves, but they are not. They have a more star shape, a, a more star shaped look to them. And they also produce, I don't know if you can capture it, there's some of the gumballs up there and I, I don't know if it's doable and they produce these the, the fruits you now these capsules that hang persist they're here now and especially when the look at the ship the seed, right so it's going to shed its leaf and then the, the fruit is going to stay and it's very ornamental in that way um, so they do look like maples but maples are alternate the leaves are arranged on an alternate uh, arrangement on the branches, and these ones are opposite. So it's a, it's a good way to set, to tell when the leaves are out. It's a good way to tell how if it's a maple or if it's a, a, a sweet gum. And now we're gonna go right behind us. It's where the tulip trees are. Real quick look here at that sweet gum while he's turning to the tulip tree. You can see here those kind of mapley looking leaves but that aren't maple um and this young tree here and cheryl that's over you're by the uh, thompson street entrance there right i think you're by the thompson street entrance correct yes and uh just a reminder uh if you're not someone who's a gardener who works for the parks department please do not climb over the fencing that he just climbed over but he knows what's planted there so uh, it's a little bit uh he knows what he's doing. If you're in the park, please don't. <laughs> All right. So these are, yeah, please don't. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm going to yell at you. Just kidding, but. <laughs> Very nicely, but yes. <laughs> so uh, we have, these are two or three. Native, they're native, uh, like the sweet gums. They're native to Eastern North America, Eastern US. They also grow majestic. They, these will grow over 100 feet tall. And, and they'll get really, really massive. Uh, I'm going to walk up here. Sure. So we, this is a lawn, so it is okay for me to walk here. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
has a it has very distinctive foliage. If you if you try hard, people see that the leaf it's upside down now. But if I turn it around, if you try hard, some people see a tulip shape there, and that's one reason why it's called a tulip uh, tulip tree. The other one is the flower that looks like uh, when it's open, it looks like uh, a tulip, and it opens up early in the year and while these trees are small you can actually see the flowers but once they grow once they reach their their full height you wouldn't really see the flowers because they really be up there but you'll see the petals on the ground and that's a telltale now you see the petals on the ground you look up there's your two tree it's in the magnolia for me actually and we have a lot of magnolias, which will be for another talk in the spring, maybe, <laughs> when they're flowering. Uh, and there's two tulip trees planted here, correct? Yes, there are two yeah. tulip trees. Yes. Got it. That's correct. Great. Right. Yeah, that's the tulip tree. Excellent. Okay. Oh, here. Here. Oh. You found a good example. Here's the, here's the, well, the, the, the seeds, right? The fruit, the fruit. And this will open up later, later on. I'm, not, I'm gonna try not to move too much. Uh, go. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. All right. So these will open up. So even the the seed hay, the seed capsule is gonna open up, and there too, with a little bit of creativity, you can see a tulip there. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Grace is gonna give us a, a a close up as we walk to our next stop. Oh, next, here is that close up on the tulip tree. Um, yeah, I, that's that's a bit of a stretch to say that the leaves look like they have a tulip shape, but I guess if you squint and sort of tilt your eyes. <laughs> yeah, but the, I mean, the flowers really do. Yeah, it's the flowers that really sell it. <laughs> okay, here we are. Oh, we are at our next stop, or the, the um, northern red oak. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, I'm following something. Uh, this is why Guy is giving this tour and not me. <laughs> oh, sorry, Guy, I got the back of your head. <laughs> All right. So this is the northern red oak. It's native. It's native to here and to north, central U.S. It's, it's, look at this shape. Uh, I'm right? going to go back. Yeah, go back a little bit. It's yeah. always great to take a step back and look at the shape of the shape. I'm going to look behind me too to make sure yeah. I'm not bumping into it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's great how it goes right over the path like that. Mm -hmm. It creates that nice canopy. Look how beautiful it is. It's really nice and rounded. And, uh, and just because there's two trees in the frame, what is the tree right to the right of the... That's a London plane. London plane. Okay, yeah, that's great. a London plane right there. Just so we're not getting anyone confused. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, red oak called red because uh, in the fall, not always, but it can have a really nice red burgundy color. Last year, two years ago, it was spectacular. Last year wasn't so great. I hope I'm thinking that this year is going to be uh, because of the how mild the winter was, the rainfall. I think it's going to be. A, a really nice striking fall color. It's a very prolific acorn producer, so the squirrels love it, and so do the blue jays. The blue jays eat the acorns, the birds, I mean, the blue jay birds. They eat, they love acorns. And that's another reason why we shouldn't feed the animals in the park, because they got food. The squirrels can eat. They eat this. And uh, is it is it also correct that uh, the blue jays tend to torment the fox? <laughs> they 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 get defensive, eh? When yeah. When they're, when they're when they're, yeah. They, yeah. They get defensive. Okay, makes sense. And they they're very loud and striking, and yeah. you hear them. Can we just take a close up on that uh, bark of yes. the tree? Yeah, I've got a good close up of the leaves, but getting nice up and close to the bark would be good. It's hard with the leaves; they're so high up. I know. I, I feel like that uh, that that it looks like a ski slope almost. Like you know, people have run down it. It's very characteristic for it. Yes, and and the, and the leaves on this one. These are one of the largest leaves in the oak. And and if you can see in the close up that, that Grace has there, 
the the side the lobes the sinuses are the flesh and the lobes are the, the points that are sticking out they tend they're pointier you know you can usually classify oaks as rounded or pointy the, the red oak is pointy pointy you might have a squirrel in the picture in a second yeah, i was gonna say you think you've got a squirrel friend there yeah made the image a little shaky. I had it on the fence and uh, he just jumped right on there and huh. took it all up. <laughs> so rude. Oh, uh, you know, it's live from the park. All right, yeah. Keith, the next step. Yes. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go dark so we don't get you busy. Yeah, and here's our good close up, as good as a, as good as a short person standing underneath the tree can get. Um, but you can see that's a, that shape on the leaf there. Yeah, that's much better than what I could grab, so thank you. Very distinctive for that oak. I do, Guy, I hope your prediction is right. I would love a bright, uh, cheerful fall foliage show in the park. That would be a nice thing to have right about now. <laughs> hey, hey to that. Yeah, maybe 2020 can give us something good. <laughs> That'd be nice. So we are now walking from um, from the Thompson Street entrance near the park house. We've just gone by it. We're going by the large dog run, and uh, we're gonna wind up here over in the uh, southwest corner of the park. Am I right, Keith? Southwest, yes. Yes. <laughs> that that was someone snoring. If you picked up that audio. <laughs> Live from the park. Live from the park. Sorry, it startled me a little bit. But <laughs> we're all good. <laughs> and we are now just making our way into Chess Plaza. So I'm going to just try and keep it steady so I don't rattle you too much. You're doing a very good job. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, we can point it here. Okay. All right, and this is the blue atlas cedar. Like the Diodor cedar, it's in the pine family. And this one is evergreen, like the, the Diodor cedar. And these also grow majestic. These will grow 70, 80, 90 feet tall. And they, once, once they're taller, the, the branching pattern is very striking. It's a little bit. It's a little bit like the, the Diodar cedar, but this one has a different tinge, like it's a bluish. It does the blue apple cedar, right? It yeah. has a bluish tinge to it. <laughs> but it's it's also a tree that it's gonna be majestic and, and create a really a really, really, really nice space. Uh, it's very well adapted like all of our trees, right? It's very well adapted uh, to our zone and even to warmer zones. And when planting new trees. We have to keep that in mind because our temperatures are going up. Mm -hmm. So if we plant a tree that's marginally hardy, let's say uh, planting zones are divided in, into numbers, but we are in zone seven. Floor, down Miami is, is about zone 12. Uh, so a lot of our trees are zone at least seven to zone nine, which would be, I believe, South Carolina. Uh, so when as the temperatures rise, it's very important to plant trees that can take warmer weather than we have here. Because if we plant a, a, a zone, a, a tree that's maximum heat capacity zone seven, it won't survive in the future. So mm. thinking ahead, we're, now we want these trees to survive for hundreds of years. So thinking ahead, long, long, long term, it's very important to look at that. The, the red walks, for example, uh, they are to zone eight. They, they, they're hardy to zone eight. So it's not a good idea to plant them anymore. The ones that are here are here are established, but uh, it's not really a good, a, a good uh, decision to plant them from now on because looking ahead, the chances are they are not going to uh, survive very long. We're mm -hmm. talking about not in our lifetime, right. but, you know, just... Well, wow, that's a really sobering uh, uh, planning thought uh, that I had not thought of before. A lot of trees already don't don't 
have a have a hard time. Sugar maples, for example, are, are, are you know a lot of reports saying that it, they're, they're struggling throughout the state because it's just getting too warm for them. Uh, there are some birches that's not a good idea to plant them anymore. Yeah, you know it's they won't survive very long. Even now they struggle. Uh, Canadian hemlock, not a good idea anymore either. Mm -hmm. They're just they'll survive for now, but long term. Uh, planning, not a good decision. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll close the camera for our next stop. So, Grace, if you can put up our... Yes, I've got a great close-up on this, uh, this Blue Atlas Cedar, which I think gives you a, a bit more of a sense of that coloring, too, sort of that greenish-blue... Um, that is so very distinctive. And just, uh, I'm gonna call your attention to the time, you two. We are at 12.55. Um, so maybe as you are walking to the Catalpa, I think that's your next stop, right, Guy? And uh, we'll, we'll wrap up in just a few minutes, but reminder that if you do have any questions, to please put those in the chat or the Q&A boxes and we'll make sure that we get to them. Um, I know we have a couple already, but we'll um, make sure we have time to answer all of your, your questions. And um, they're uh, walking now from over in Chess Plaza over to Holly Plaza. And I will tell you that the tree that we are about to look at is one of Cheryl's personal favorites. Um, it's one of mine as well. So uh hope that doesn't uh, get you overly excited. I hope I'm not overly promising, but this is one of the, the cooler looking trees in the park. Oh, Cheryl, you guys are muted. So sorry about that. There you go. <laughs> All right, so that's the Catalpa, Cheryl's and Grace's favorite. I also <laughs> love this tree. I mean, look, look at the size, look how, again, it's good to step back and look at it from a distance. And right now, look at those leaves. They're so huge, they're so tropical looking. And actually, they're in the family of many lianas in, in South America, Jacaranda, that is widely planted in California. And they are in the same family. And, and the bean, the, the flower pods, the, the seed pods are still hanging. And it's ornamental in so many ways. In the, in the early spring, when it's flowering, these panicles, these long panicles of flowers, white flowers coming down. And when the petals fall, the, the ground here is covered with them. And it's gorgeous. And when it sheds the leaves, it's still, it's still striking because the seeds are still there. The pods are still hanging there. Uh, it, it is like all of the other trees except the holly. Like all of the other trees except the holly, these are uh, uh, park trees, right? Like they, they're to be planted in large, large areas because they grow uh, so gigantic and majestic. You know, it grows, it grows really tall. This is what, about two feet tall? And they can grow even taller than that. Whoa! <laughs> so so the, the secret is my favorite thing about the catalpa is the, is the seeds, those bean like green bean looking things. When I was young, I would call these trees green bean trees. And so when I started working here and I, and I learned what they're really named, I was so happy, but I still tend to call it the green bean tree. <laughs> yeah, so Grace, if you have some questions for us. Yes, while you're uh, walking to the next, so I'll pull up our good close up here on the Catalpa. You can see those long green, uh, the green bean looking pods hanging there in between the branches. Um, it is a beautiful, big, tall tree. But yes, Cheryl, uh, we've got one question, which is uh, Guy keeps mentioning how tall some of these trees can grow. Can they still do that in a park environment and not in a forest? Good question, Guy. Are, are we muted? No. No, no. no. Uh, usually they tend to grow uh, taller in the forest. But when I say 70 feet, I'm talking about 70 feet in a park setting. In the wild, they can grow uh, to 100 to 120. We're going to ah. go that way. Okay. So, yeah. so we are walking now um, from Holly Plaza um, over on the west side of Fountain. 
uh, towards the arch to our last stop. Great, and we'll have, uh, we can take one more question while you guys are walking, which is, um, you know, the, the, how do the trees, what kind of maintenance does the tree require? How much care do these trees need once they've been planted? All right, for young trees, for newly planted trees, water. Water, water is the most important. That's why most young trees fail. Uh, there, are, there are other reasons, but water is the most important. Protecting them is also very important, right? You don't want anybody damaging. You don't want uh, cars hitting them, people breaking them. So protecting them is very important. But I would say that watering is the, is the most important factor, you know, when for uh, a young tree. Uh, so there's a specific um, uh, department, right, in New York City Parks that works with trees, correct? Yeah, so the forestry department, uh, they are the ones who, who manage the trees. They are the ones who prune. They, they are the ones who inspect and, and, and look at the health of trees. Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay, are we ready for our last tree? Yes. All right. Sure. <laughs> are, we, are, you, are we live? Yes, we're live. Right, yeah. So, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so we looked at the, the meadow sequoia, the dawn redwood, and I mentioned it is close to the uh, bald cypress. And we have the bald cypresses right there. It is coming into view right here, right at the arch entrance to the park on the west side. I'm trying to keep it steady, folks. You're doing I'm a great job. Doing my marching band uh, walk. <laughs> It's the funniest thing. When they're next to each other, they're very clear. They're very yeah, different. Yeah. But when they're far away from each other, they can be easily mistaken for each other. It looks uh, a lot like a fern. Yes. They're finer. Mm -hmm. the, the, lead, the leaves are smaller. And what I was saying before, the metasequoia, the dawn redwood, the flower, the, the leaves come out right across from each other. Not on the bald cypress. The bald cypress, you have one coming out here. Another one here, right, another one here, right, right, another right. one here, right? So they're not opposite each other. They go around, around and around. Got uh, it. It's also a conifer, but it's deciduous. It tolerates a wide range of soils, soil moisture, especially. It will grow near river, you know, near rivers, near the ponds. When it does grow near the water, it sends out, uh, they're called knees, these buttress trees. They stick out of the ground. Some people say it's for support. Some people say it's like to help with oxygen intake. And also, it does take another tree that grows there. It's called, uh, and it's very structured. It has this pyramidal shape, very striking. And we have it here on both sides of the arch. And these are natives too. These are natives to Eastern North America. So yeah. So now too. Conclude the talk, right? The three talk. <laughs> I wanted to finish with this with the bald cypresses. Thank you so much, e. Thank you. Um, Grace. Are there any other questions? We have just one, and we'll answer it nice and quick since we're a couple minutes past the top of the hour. Thank you for everyone for sticking with us. Um, it, the last question is about the catalpa, and how long has it been in the park, and is it common in city parks? And that question actually comes from one of our greeter guides, Martha. She can normally be found in the park with the wagon on weekends, helping people find things and teaching people about the park. Um, our greeters have not been out this season due to COVID, but uh, under the catalpa is a very common spot to park the wagon, so they love that shade and would like to know more about the tree. I don't know when it was planted. That will be I, another follow-up that we'll get for you. Yeah, I, I can estimate. I don't, I don't know if there are records. Uh, that will be a nice research project to look into it, and I would like to do it for a lot of our trees to look into it. I've looked into a lot of uh, historical pictures, and I've seen the, the English elm, for example. You can see it when it was much shorter. Uh, but we don't have, I don't, I don't know if you have the record of when it was planted. You can estimate, you can take a look uh, you know, at the circumference of the tree and you can kind of approximate the age. 
I've seen it in other parks. I can think I've seen it in Central Park. Actually, I've seen it in Prospect Park. Mm. Uh, it is a larger park tree. So they want to plant it in the corner part. Yeah. Because so, it's just massive. So it's not a regular street tree then? No, no. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Well, um, I'd like to I'd like to thank Guy for taking time out of his very busy schedule in the fall. They've been doing some um, they've been doing some fall planting and they're starting to do a lot of lawn maintenance at this time of the year. They just closed off a lawn on the east side and so thank you for taking the time out of your day. You're and very welcome. I'm gonna just switch the camera and say hi. <laughs> I know I've been uh, incognito this webinar. <laughs> Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you both. Love being in the park. And uh, I'll just plug our next lunchtime lecture will be on October 1st, same time, 1230 to 1. Uh, and it will be Cheryl who will be discussing uh, the half-freed slaves that used to farm the land that is now Washington Square Park. So it'll be a very interesting historical look back. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Have a great day. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye, V. <laughs>